hello hello and welcome i hope you had a wonderful wonderful weekend i had a great day today dalton and i went to the tampa bay rays game they played the cincinnati reds and we won and dalton got to run the bases and he made a friend in line so did you have a good time so we had a good time. We're trying to go to as many games as we can before school starts. School is starting back up in two weeks. Um, Dalton has brought a snack out here with him. So I believe what caused me to make this video transpired Thursday, Friday, and some of into Saturday. And I will tell you that I quoted the person on my thumbnail and they said, that they absolutely cannot trust me. And I will tell you that story at the end of the video, but what this situation brought up for me is something that I think is really important for both sellers and buyers to know. And that is the return policy on all of these different platforms we both sell and I'm sure a lot of us buy on. So if you're a buyer on these platforms, this is going to go over all of the return policies. I am going to cover high bid auctions. I am going to cover... Poshmark, Mercari, eBay, and whatnot. We'll tell you the return policy for all of those because I think it's very, very important to need to know and educate yourself. And if you happen to not know, this video will definitely help you. And again, I will tell you the story of why you can't trust me at the end of it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as a seller on all of these platforms, it is really important to know the return policy so that you know what to expect. But also as a buyer, and I will tell you, I source occasionally off of eBay myself. I know a lot of people that will source off Mercari. You also can source off of Poshmark because items are listed under value on all of the platforms. And if you're looking for a particular kind of item, you might be able to find it. But if you're a collector or just an everyday buyer on these platforms, you really need to know the return policy that is set forth by the platform. So I am going to start out with Poshmark. Actually, Poshmark and Mercari are very, very close to the same. So I'll kind of group those two together. So for both Poshmark and Mercari, the rule for returning an item is 72 hours and that is three days it is not three business days it is 72 hours from when you receive the item and on both of those platforms you are not allowed to return it because you changed your mind you are not allowed to return it because it doesn't fit unless that seller and this is where you sellers need to pay attention unless that seller put it as the wrong size or the wrong category then a return would be allowed but if that item is as was listed, you if it has defects and the seller noted them and you didn't pay attention to the photos or the description, that is not a valid reason for return on either Poshmark or on Mercari. And that means after the three days, even within the three days, they will not allow a return. But after three days you cannot return the item at all for any reason. So that means if you were out of town, your package came, you came back five days later, returns are not allowed. You're stuck with it, that is it, no questions asked. And I will tell you as a seller, I absolutely love this policy because my buyer has three days if they have a problem, if it was damaged in shipping, anything, they have to report it within three days. After that three days, that sale is closed. My funds are given to me. And as a buyer, you have absolutely no recourse. So if you're buying on Poshmark or Mercari, know that you need to be home when the package comes. You need to open it. You need to inspect it. And if you have an issue with it, you need to report it right away. As a seller, know that after that three-day period has passed, you are good to go. Those funds are yours. They will not allow a buyer for any reason to return an item after that three-day period. So let's talk about high bid. And I actually have a couple of examples here that I want to show you that are mistakes that I made. 
So Hybit is an online auction platform that is basically a network of different auction companies. All of them are individual businesses. Hybit is not like one big auction company. It is kind of like eBay and Amazon where you have hundreds of different sellers that happen to be auctioneers selling stuff. Now with Hybit, and this is the same case if you go to an in-person auction, all sales are as is and all sales are final. And that means if you buy an item that is fake or it has damage, tough. And that's where as a buyer, you know, I'm buying merchandise to sell, that is on me. So most of these auction companies have preview days. You can go there in person, you can inspect the item and see if there are any issues. That is up to you to do your due, due diligence. It is all on you. So my two examples. And if you sell luxury bags, you're gonna say, cat, you're friggin' ding dong. And that's okay. I don't carry luxury bags. I don't know luxury bags. Therefore, I probably should not have bought luxury bags off of an auction, right? Exhibit number A, letter A. This is a Louis Vuitton purse that I paid almost $200 for that is fake as all get out. So what do I do when I get this fake Louis Vuitton? Well, what I did is I went to realauthentication.com. I paid $30 because before I list that item on eBay, it is my responsibility to make sure it's not fake. Nobody else's. Not that auction company. They sold it to me as is, where is. It is my responsibility. So therefore I paid $30 on real authentication. There were two of them. I'm, I'll show you exhibit B here in a minute. But there were two from that same auction house, uh, auction company that I trust. I will still say I trust them. So I bought these from an auction company that I trusted. I will say I do still trust them because I've gotten many good items and I knew I was buying it as is where is. They did not put that it was authentic. Uh, they did not say it had a certificate. Some auction companies will say it's authentic or say that it's verified and they've already paid for a certificate. So there are different ways or you can buy it as is and then you're taking a chance it's not real, which is what happened with mine. So I did not contact them. I was out $200 for that purse plus I was out $30 for the authentication. So that's where I want to tell you sellers that it is your responsibility to make sure that's real. No matter where you buy it from, you buy it from a yard sale, garage sale, you buy it from a thrift store. I had somebody not long ago contact me. She thought she had a real Louis Vuitton. I recommended she go to real authentication and pay that $30, see if it's real. And she thought she could just post it on eBay and eBay would authenticate it. So the problem with that is, is eBay is authenticating that to protect the buyer. And if you send in a fake purse, shoes, whatever, to the authentication, your account's gonna get dinged. You could possibly lose your account. So it is on you to get that authenticated before you post it on eBay. And if you do not and you post it, you could lose your account. Now, as a buyer of that handbag, if it did not go through eBay's authenticity guarantee, which there are many different factors that determine which items do, then as a buyer, it is on you, whether you are knowledgeable enough, and a lot of people are that buy those handbags and carry them. I am not one of them. Um, I do have several friends that could spot a fake a mile away. But if you are not knowledgeable enough as a buyer, when you get that bag, I would also recommend buyers to go, even if you're the end product user and you want to know that it's authentic, get it authenticated if you don't have the knowledge to do that. And the reason I'm saying this is, is as that buyer, that's in your responsibility as well. So there's several different lines of defense that are here to protect both buyers and sellers. So if you're a buyer on Poshmark or Mercari, and your item does not go through the authentication process, Poshmark does have authentication. I believe theirs is for items $500 or more. I've sold a paperweight on there that went through authentication. 
and they will authenticate anything that's over $500. But if you buy a $300 handbag, it has not gone through the authentication process. You have three days to file a claim with Poshmark and Mercari. So you better get that bag, open it. If something looks funny, go on real authentication. Yes, you're gonna be out the $30 that is on you. If you suspect it's fake though, pay that. And then you have proof that it is not authentic. And then Mercari or Poshmark are going to be more likely to approve your return. If you're buying on Hybid, again, most auction companies, both online and in person, are as is, where is, you're out whatever you spent. But it is your responsibility as a seller. I did not list that Louis Vuitton. It, it has been sitting here like a desk ornament and a reminder to me, right? It, like it's remi I, I see it every time I come out here to remember what I know and what I don't know. <laughs> and what I don't know is is luxury handbags, unfortunately. So the I'll show you exhibit B. Exhibit B wasn't as high of a cost mistake, but nonetheless it was. So this is a Dooney and Burke that I thought was real. This one I I listed because I really thought it was real. And I haven't paid for this to go through authentication. And it might be it might be real. But um maybe if you're a Dooney expert you could tell me if it, if it is, again, you might be laughing at me saying, cat, you're ding dong. That's definitely fake. Um, but I put this up on eBay. eBay took it down and that was a ding on my account. That's another high bid purchase. So the point of that is as a seller, it is your responsibility to know it's real before you post it. As a buyer, if you were buying on Poshmark and Mercari, you have three days to report that. If you were buying on high bid, you were out of luck. And whether you're a buyer, end buyer, or a reseller buying it to resell, unless that high bid company said it was guaranteed authentic, which probably 90% of them do not, then you have no, no recourse to that. Now, if they said it was authentic, I would go back to them with paperwork and prove to them and say, look, this is not authentic. Then I would fight it. But 90% of stuff sold on Hybid is as is where is. So just remember that with Hybid, there really are no returns because they are auction houses. All right, let's talk about eBay. So eBay's return policy is up to the individual seller. Myself, I do free 30 day returns, meaning I pay the shipping. They can return the item for any reason, any reason they want. Now, if they say, that it is not as described or not working. So as a buyer on eBay, if you get something that's completely different from what that seller described, or you get something, say it was a cell phone that you said was working, it is not working, then whether they take returns or not, you can open a claim with eBay and eBay will force a seller to accept it. So as a seller, those are the reasons, whether you have returns or not, if you did not describe the item accurately, or if you sent them an item, that was not functioning or it broke in shipping, eBay can and will force you to accept a return. And that is just something that every seller has to deal with. And that's only fair to the buyer, right? Whether you have returns or not, if you didn't describe it properly or it doesn't function, as you said, the buyer should be allowed to get a return. Now, I have free 30 day returns. People can return it for any reason at all. It does not matter what it is. And that's just part of my business practice. You could also have 14 day returns. You can do buyer paid returns. So that means if they got it, it didn't fit. They would pay the shipping for it to come back to you. For me, I'm gonna pay that shipping for it to come back to me. And my return rate is very, very low. So I, I don't see it as a negative. I think it makes my buyers feel more comfortable. They know they can send it back for any reason. But if you are a seller that says you don't take returns, just know that if you don't describe it accurately or it arrives broken, that eBay is going to force you to take that return anyway. So as a buyer on eBay, you should be confident buying because if it's not as described, which would include fake items, or it is broken, you can get a return whether that seller accepts them or not. And the problem with that comes with people fraudulently opening item not as described case, right? 
We all have had it. If you're a seller, people know that if they say it's not as described, they don't have to pay the shipping to get it back to you. If you do not provide free returns, I will tell you, if a buyer opens a case, says it's not as described, but it is, you can fight that and eBay will credit you for the label. If it was a new item, they took the tags off, eBay will credit you up to 100% of that item's cost. So just know there are things that you can do if this does happen. You can report the buyer and to all the buyers out there, eBay keeps track of how many times you are saying an item isn't described and if a seller reports you and if you do it too many times, you're going to lose your eBay account. So I would not recommend opening an item not as described or broken case unless that is actually the case because sellers do have ramifications against you if your claim is false they can deduct up to 50%. Like if it was a new item, you wore it, you sent it back to them, they can take 50%. You paid 100, they're only gonna give you 50 because you wearing and removing tags off of a new item now just cost that item's value to be cut in half. So just know there, there are recourses on both sides for sellers as well as buyers, and that is to protect both sides. So very, very important to know those reasons and just be aware, be aware as a buyer, be aware as a seller, do not sell things and try and get things over on your buyers because they'll return them, right? They will return them. All right, let's talk about YouTube sales for a minute. I would, as both a buyer on YouTube auctions as well as a seller, I would assume that all YouTube auctions are just like any other online or in-person auction and they are as is, where is. If you have any questions before you buy an item on a YouTube auction, you should ask the questions. The only exception to that would be if the item arrives broken. I feel the seller should either ask you to open a claim so that you get your money back or they open a claim and give you a refund. So that would be the only exception for YouTube auctions for me would be if the item was broke when it arrived to you because an online auction, you're seeing the item, you have a chance to ask questions about it before you are buying it. All right, let's talk about what not and then I am going to tell you the story that brought this whole video about. So on what not, their return policy is, 14 days. So if you get something and it is not as described or completely different, then you have 14 days to open a claim with whatnot. You have 30 days to send the item back. I believe they're changing it a little bit where the sellers are actually getting the returns. Previously, whatnot actually intercepted all the returns because they wanted to see, like if sellers are selling a ton of fake items, they're going to kick them off the whatnot platform. Now, if you are a buyer on whatnot. Again, just like Hybid, due diligence. If you have questions, you need to ask them. Now, if you were completely misled, you have 14 days. So that means all of these whatnot packages, if you're going crazy like I did when whatnot first came out, all these whatnot packages, you need to open them. You need to check them. If you think something is fake, you need to notify whatnot ASAP. And I will talk about canceling bids and I just did this for somebody, but nine times out of 10, sellers are not going to cancel an order for you. And I'll tell you exactly why. And I'll tell you as a seller that I typically do not. I did it on one of my last shows, but here's the deal. So let's say I have a necklace. I started at $5. It sells to you for $11. That means there was another bidder willing to pay $10. You cancel your $11 sale. I just lost, your $11 is gone, but I lost that $10 bidder that was willing to pay when you were not. So you canceling cost me money. Now I will tell you on whatnot on like card pulls, on mystery boxes, you are not allowed to cancel. You can't see what you get for a mystery and then cancel it. That is not allowed. It is absolutely not okay. And again, with me and I probably should have stuck to my guns, but I didn't, that people canceling cost me money. And it's detrimental as a business owner when, again, I had a bidder right below them 
that was willing to pay and accept the item, they bid up to $11 and then they don't want to pay. Well, I don't find this out till after the show, so I can't resell the item right then. And who's to say that when I resell the item, it doesn't sell for $5? versus the $10 that I would have gotten. So the majority of your live sellers are not going to, and I don't think they should, cancel a bid. So keep that in mind. Now, the reason I'm saying this, and the reason I was told that I cannot be trusted, and let me know, if you, if you agree with my buyer in this situation, I'm okay with that. I will tell you I'm not changing my mind. I have spoke with many, many of my friends who are both sellers and buyers to get input before I made the decision that I did. So I was contacted late last week about a purchase and it was a high dollar purchase. I'm going to tell you it was a $150 item. They said that I sold it as Sterling and that it was not. Now, we tested, I would say, the majority of our items, but when I was in the height of my whatnot selling, we would get boxes in and I would tell people that items had not been tested. And I would say, look, this is marked. I haven't tested it. It just came in. I would let people know that. So I get a message saying, I sold this item on eBay I bought it from you and whatnot. You said it was Sterling. My buyer is now saying it is not Sterling. I got it back. I tested it. It's not Sterling. So the problem for me is I've sold 30,000 items on whatnot. And I do want to point out I have five star reviews on 30,000 items. Okay. It is. And I would not be telling you this if my business model is to cheat people or, you know, try and be not not honest about things, right? I, if anything, am too blunt and too honest about things. I am not a dishonest person, but people make mistakes. So I could have had an expired acid test kit. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what happened. So they gave me the order number. They didn't send me a picture of the item. I had their name, so I, what do I do? I go on whatnot, I search for their name, I search for the order number, I cannot find it. So I wrote back and said, hey, I cannot find this in my records, when did you buy this item? Their response was in November. We are now coming up on August. So it has been nine to 10 months since this item was bought. So my issue with this is I cannot find the receipt. I cannot find a picture. I do not know how it was titled. And I can't see the video to see if I said, hey, just got this in, might not be Sterling. I don't know. It was almost 10 months ago. Okay. So I talked with a lot of people because the last thing that I want to do is be dishonest with a customer. My reputation, especially, I'm out here, right? I am on YouTube, I have a lot of followers. I do not want people talking crap about me, you know? But beyond that, I am an honest person, I am a fair person, but 10 months after a purchase is way too long. So what happened is she, listed it on eBay. She did not test it when she received it from me. And it took a long time to sell. And the buyer got it. Buyer returned it, said it wasn't right. And she then tested it. So here's kind of the gaps in this story. So A, I don't know if her buyer had a duplicate of this item, got the real item, sent her back fake item, she doesn't know either because she didn't test it. So yes, she trusted me, but guys, it is your responsibility before you list an item to ensure it is real or authentic. It is not mine. And had she contacted me within that 30 day period, I would have been able to see the receipt. I would have been able to see the video and I would have gladly given her her money back. 
And I'll tell you, if I sell an item for 150 on whatnot, I thought it was worth well over $500. And that might be the case whether it was sterling or not. It might have been a non-sterling item worth that much because of what it was. So I can't see anything. I've sold 30,000 items. I don't remember it. I was not sent any photos of it to even jog my memory. So she said I, she bought it for me. She thought she could trust me. She did not test it. She listed it and now her buyers returned it. I told her exactly what I just told you guys earlier. What not policy is 14 days to open a return, 30 days to send it back. I also told her she could contact them. Maybe they'll make an exception. For me, I don't know how many hands this has been in and I don't know if a buyer switched it out. I have no clue what has happened to it in almost a year. And my response, and if you guys know me, I am blunt. My response was, because she told me I was very unprofessional. And my response was, I felt she was also being unprofessional because she was asking for a return 10 months after buying something. And if you think I'm wrong, you think I'm wrong. And that's okay. But we talked about on the podcast last week, I'm letting somebody return pillowcases. It's been about 45 days because they bought the wrong item. No fault of my own. I am very, very reasonable. And I'm probably a little too soft hearted. Most of the people in the podcast chat said they would not have allowed that buyer with the pillowcases to send them back. I want to be nice. I want to do the right thing by my buyer, whether it is one of you or whether it's somebody I don't know. And the majority of my buyers are not viewers. They're people that are just buying from me off eBay. 10 months is too long. So again, I bring it back to, I don't care if you buy from me, question me. I am human. I can make mistakes. Anybody can make mistakes. I don't know how many of us, I'll tell you, we have done it multiple times, have accidentally shipped the wrong item or shipped the wrong size we're human beings. We're not robots. We are not perfect. And as a seller, the ultimate responsibility comes on you before you list that item to verify that it is exactly what you say it is when you were listing it. Doesn't matter who you buy it from. Doesn't matter if it's me. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's your responsibility before you put it up to know that it is authentic and that it is real. Could I have listed that Louis Vuitton? I could have, but I did my due diligence. I got, I would say I got it authenticated, but I got it found not authenticated. So it's sitting on my desk. Am I out $230? I am. Did I learn a lesson? I did. Will I buy any more luxury purses that are not authenticated? Probably not. So I really wanted to make this again for both buyers and sellers. And most of us that are sellers are also buyers, but you really need to know the return policies on all of these platforms, including Hybrid, including in-person auctions if you go to them. And you need to take your personal responsibility when you're purchasing it, that if you did not check it, it is on you. And if you are past three days on Poshmark and Mercari, that's your fault. That is their policy. Three days is all you have to return it. If you were out of town, it took you a week to open the package. It's completely damaged. You know the policy. So you can let me know if you think I'm horrible. I am putting myself out there. I'm telling you exactly what happened and I'm telling you I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not perfect. And I try and be an, as honest as I can when I am listing items, when I'm selling items on live sales, but stuff gets missed. We actually contact buyers on eBay if we notice any small like stain or rip or something we didn't disclose before we ship the item. And I recommend that you do as well to make sure they still want it. Hey, look, this has a stain on the arm. I didn't notice it. I'm so sorry. Would you still like the item? If you would, I'm willing to give you a discount. And if not, I will cancel and immediately offer you a refund. And then I cancel it by your request. It. Just, just another little tip. So I'm going to let you go again. I hope you have had a wonderful 
wonderful weekend. Dalton and I had a great time at the Rays game today. Super excited. I'm going to be buying tickets for the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Kansas City Chiefs the preseason football game for my mom's 75th birthday. So those of you that know me know that my husband hates sports and I love them. I'm a football fanatic. I've turned into a baseball fanatic here in the past few months. And my mom is a football fanatic like I am. So she turned 75 in August and I have never been to an NFL game and her and I both love the Chiefs. We love Patrick Mahomes and even though we're from Jacksonville, I born and I, I was raised in Jacksonville, I will be sporting some Chiefs gear. I love the Kansas City Chiefs. I also love the Tampa Bay Bucks. But so I'm super excited about that. I want to thank you guys again too for all the donations. I did put up the list and I'll put that in the comments for the kids that I'm helping for their school supplies. I put their clothes on there and like little stuff. I didn't put shoes and I didn't put backpacks because I figured those would be fun to take them and let them pick what they want. But I do have a list if you'd like to help. They're from like $1.99 for pencils. I think the most expensive thing is like $30 for a nap mat for the little three-year-old because she's going to pre-K. But we are over halfway to my goal, which is 10,000. We are over 5,000. So you guys are absolutely amazing. I have felt so honored and so blessed to be able to help this family through coordinating it and all of you. You're absolutely amazing. My community is amazing. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop blabbering. Have a wonderful week. Make a ton of sales. And Tuesday, George the Antique Nomad is going to be my co-host. Rod will be out. We will also have Kathy and Chris from Ginger Marvin and then another surprise guest. So I will see you guys Tuesday night. Enjoy your week and I will see you on the next one.